To remove our brake caliper, first thing we need to do is to remove this spring here. Now it's sprung this way, so I'm going to give it a little push and a tap towards the front of the car. It should pop out of its slot. Okay. Once that re is removed, we can now ooh, turn the wheel. There's plastic caps on the back of the caliper, which house our slider bolts, which is the next thing we're going to undo. So we push our caps out, plastic cap, plastic cap, and with a 7mm Allen key, we're going to loosen our slider bolts. Make sure we get a good purchase with the Allen key first, and we can undo it. So we spin those out now, and then we can start removing the caliper. I'm going to remove the caliper carrier, but before I do that, I want to remove the retaining bolt for the disc. So I'm going to slide my trusty little lever bar, you can use a screwdriver, in the top there. And what that's going to do is lock against our caliper carrier, and that means I can now undo this retaining bolt. This is a spline drive number 10. Wow, there she went. It's pretty tight. I was just about to say I'm going to have to do my old go tight and then reverse it, but we actually managed to back that out okay. Take that out, remove our trusty screwdriver or lever bar. Next is to crack off our caliper carrier bolts. These are a 21 mil, so I've got 21 mil socket and a reasonable size bar. See if we can budge this. Yeah. See if we can budge the top one. Yeah. Pretty tight, but we've got them to move. Spin them out on your ratchet. Put that to one side. Next, we can tap the disc off. Make sure you've got some eye protection on because you don't want to be getting any of that corroded brake disc in your eye. Next, we take the wire brush and clean up our hub assembly. A little bit of copper grease. I'll just stop the new disc corroding itself to the hub. Let's pop the disc on. Ready to pop our nice new shiny disc on. Just remember these are really heavily oiled so they will need degreasing before we put the brake pads in. So get the retaining bolt and pop him in. So this is a, a spline 10, a number 10 spline tool. Then next it's our caliper carrier or caliper yoke. And then always double check with your manufacturer's specifications for torque settings. They do vary from vehicle, vehicle to vehicle slightly, depending on what size brakes you've got uh, and what weights your vehicle can carry. Degrees time. Remember to do the other side as well. So I've cut the cable tire for our brake caliper. I've got them set up here upside down. I'm just going to push the piston back with these large set of pliers, really gently. Important to take your time with this, we don't want to force the fluid back through all the ABS too viciously, so nice and gentle. So we're going to get our brake pads in, get some copper grease on them, and then we can fit our caliper on. Now we take our 7mm Allen key, screw our caliper back into the caliper yoke with our slider bolts. Nice and tight, then we can put our little plastic caps back in. And then we've just got our brake spring to put back on. Our Make Do and Mend project on Steve the Chippy's Builder's Wagon is completed. And as per the MOT's advisories, we replaced the front brake distance pads. Steve's van is ready to go back to work.